we are back. Another episode of the Living the Canadian Dream podcast. Today, I am here with John Kamen from Lift & Co. In the quarantine zone. In the quarantine zone. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. He is the Chief Revenue Officer of Lift & Co. How are you doing today? Uh, great. A little a little surprised, but yeah. otherwise fine. Yeah, I know. I think everybody is surprised yeah. all across Canada, to be honest. Um, but I'm excited to at least get one episode in here with you. Yeah, sure. You know, drove all this way. We get to talk a little bit, <laughs> find out about your story, find out about the company, all that sort of good stuff. Absolutely. Awesome. So, is this your first time at DX3? Uh, I've been to DX3 before. It's been a couple of years. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, it's unfortunately I won't get to experience it today, but yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. that's all part of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, your company, yeah. Lift and Co. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Yeah, so Lyft, um, I actually kind of describe Lyft like the late 90s, that original dot-com boom. Yep. It had a whole bunch of very strange businesses that were just sort of a, a bunch of different revenue streams stuck together. Yeah. This is in the days before Google or Facebook, so nobody really knew what business models were going to take yet. For sure. Uh, Lyft is a little bit like that. When you think about sort of the cannabis industry, brand new to Canada, nobody really knows, you know, how that industry is going to sort of shape up, sort of foundations. Yeah. Uh, so we have built out revenue streams across sort of a number of different fronts. For sure. Um, and that's really sort of been the strategy to this point, you know, yeah. figure out how the industry is going to break and what revenue streams are going to drive. So uh, trade shows actually is how we started. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, actually the origin story kind of goes back to, 19, to 2014. We mm -hmm. had like a blog site for medical users. Okay. Uh, so that they could kind of share what worked for them given certain, you know, conditions or whatever, yeah. what different products were working. Um, so what we, so we sort of built that under lift.co and then got into events. Uh, so twice a year we host events, they're the largest of their kind in Canada, so it's a consumer and B2B show. Awesome. Uh, we run one right in this building at the end of May uh, awesome. for Toronto and then in Vancouver. In January, so. Awesome. What is that called? Yeah, it's called the Lyft Expo. Okay. Um, so it's their consumer days. It's uh, May 29th to 30th. Awesome. Assuming uh, assuming everything is better by then. Yeah, and yeah. This building is open. For sure. Yeah. Um, so over the last couple of years, you know, as we've built out a data business, uh, built out a media business, built out events. Yeah. You know, it's pretty clear to us as a publicly traded company, if you want to actually drive some results for shareholders. Yeah. Um, we've got to build a model that's much more scalable and sort of wide, you know, wide scale than that. Yeah. Uh, and something that you can export to international markets sure. as they tip to uh, to legal. Yes. So we've now started to build out a data business. Uh, it's called Cohesion. That's the brand. Okay. Uh, we built out a platform that's all based on sort of the Google Liquor infrastructure. Okay. And it's bringing really unique consumer insights data to the industry. I love that. So we're partnered with Nielsen, who I know are big supporters of DX3 yeah. just over here. For sure. We actually had them on yesterday. Oh, did it? Cynthia? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Cynthia, yeah, yeah. So Cynthia and I are, are super tight. Awesome. And cool. uh, yeah, so we're leveraging a lot of their data to build out one to one profiles love it. Uh, on cannabis consumers and help the LPs better understand how the market is forming, how to segment it, what types of consumers are interested in what types of products. Awesome. That's, yeah. that's amazing. I so love quite it. the transformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. And it's really cool to see that you have both the online and offline business. Yeah. With like yeah. The, the, the expo and stuff like that. That's yeah. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Again, you know, you've got a war chest of dollars, maybe less so now than they were a year ago. Yeah. But you know, the canopies in the Aurora is trying to figure out how do they build brand in a regu true, yeah. regulated environment. Uh, so we're just giving them a lot of different opportunities, whether it's to the consumer or, or in fact, to the trade uh, side. Of the That's very cool. So for somebody that doesn't know Lift & Co, yeah. can you explain a little bit about specifically what you guys do? Yeah, I think it's best encapsulated as we help the producers, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the, the folks that you know in, yep. in the cannabis space build brands and reach the right consumer. Sure. And that's through a whole a variety of different channels. Yeah. So I go to the website, I see a bunch of different brands, a bunch yeah. of different products. I see a lot of reviews. Yep. Very review heavy. Can you yeah. expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so the consumer proposition, you know, uh, there's a handful of customers in this country who actually know anything about the legal rep market. Yeah. Which brands, uh, do they even have any brand awareness at all, let alone sort of affinity for specific brands? Mm -hmm. You know, when they walk into a store, what are they shopping for? Is it sort of indica versus sativa? Is it THC versus a CBD product? Is it balance? What are the afflictions they, they've got? You know, what are they trying to cure for? And which products are actually going to map? So there's just no awareness right now of any of that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's really been the challenge, right? Yeah. So we're trying to build up revenue to help bring that information to the consumer. Yeah. 
And lit.co is, is an opportunity for them to share that information between themselves. So That's very cool. We kind of think of this like the trip advisor of cannabis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, in, in a world where there's no information, we've got the definitive source of crowdsourced information yeah. on the products. Which is everything, especially yeah. crowdsourced information because that's real information. Right? Yeah. People that are actually using the product. It's like going to like a Google My Business page. Exactly. You know, it, people are actually visiting this business. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. which is fantastic. Yeah. It's very interesting too. Um, can you expand like a little bit about like who this website's for? Like why should somebody sure. look at reviews? Like what's the purpose? Because yeah. there's a lot of people that are still sort of in the dark about like, you know, the new laws about cannabis, yeah. whether they're medical users or recreation users. Yeah. What's sort of the idea behind the review? Yeah, the folks who are in the dark yeah. uh, are exactly the types of people who should be coming to Lyft. Yeah. Um, so where we've got, you know, maybe 15% of the cannabis consuming population uh -huh. are died in the wool, you know, they've been potheads all their lives, mm -hmm. they know exactly what they're buying. They've been buying it illegally up till now, okay. uh, but they, they can walk into a store and make a very educated decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the other 85% of the population who yeah. are, you know, infrequent or just kind of curious for sure. um, of that consuming population, yeah. um, this, is, this is the definitive source of information. You come onto Lyft, um, you know, you can read about different products, you can understand, you know, the experiences that other people have had. Okay. Uh, so it really helps to guide you through that purchase decision. We've yeah. actually just launched an app with Consumer App. Okay. Um, we're, we haven't put a lot of money behind it yet, so it's just sort of getting a little bit of organic traction. We're doing some beta testing. Great, I love and that. And the idea is that it brings all of that review information forward to the user when they're in the store. That's fantastic. So, yeah. you know, one, one gap that the industry has really sort of, uh, honed in on, yeah. consumer comes into the store and they're just looking around at all the shelves, you know, looking around at all the product and menu boards. They have no idea what they're buying. They don't know what any of these products yeah. do. So they're automatically shunted to a face-to-face -face relationship with uh, the frontline staff. We call them the butt tenders. Okay. And those folks will tell them, oh yeah, you know, you need to sleep, so I'm gonna get you this balanced CBD yeah. product. Um, what we're doing is actually bringing that information forward, so it's like a disintermediation of the butt tender. Oh, okay, I'm looking for something for sleep. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Somebody seemed to like this product. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And I like the whole review idea. I'm a big review guy because sometimes when you go to a store, it, it doesn't. We don't have to talk about certain businesses, but yeah. just in general, when you go to a store, sometimes people aren't really as passionate about the product as you know as other people are. Yeah. Right. Like if you walk into like a sports store, some people are gonna know specific shoes, some people aren't gonna know those specific shoes. Right. And I assume it's probably the same thing with cannabis. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's just basically based on opinion. Some people are more invested in the research. Some people. Are less invested in, oh, like, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got high, you know, high degree of intensity yeah. in the category, and you're, you know, really focused on it, spend a lot of time looking at it. Yeah. And for us, you know, we know that, you know, it's a bit of a slog, right? I mean, there's tons and tons of product out there. So, for somebody new to the industry, you know, if they're sort of running through that list, there's yeah. a huge amount of information there. So we're like, you know what? Just put that information in someone's hands when they're in the store, and they can match it against what products is on shelf. It's like, oh, okay, you know that. Yeah. That seems to get a good review, that works. Yeah, I can definitely see that app being very helpful because yeah. especially, you know, if you're only seeing names and just like product, like I guess, descriptions on the board, you might not know yeah. exactly what it means. I mean, you're, you know, that's the whole premise behind a consumer app. If it's going to actually get some traction, it's got to solve a problem for somebody, right? Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. I don't know if, I don't know if shopping for cannabis is a problem, but... Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> for some people, it definitely will be, but, yeah. but it's all good. Um, yeah. What's the name of the app? Uh, so it's the Lift and Co app. Lift so and Co app. So Lift and Co in, uh, uh, in Apple the and Store Google Play Store. Play. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. That's awesome. For the app, for the website, are you sort of catering to more people that are looking for medicinal medicinal use or recreation? Yeah, use? we are 100% recreation focused. It was a sort of an origin story for us originally, mm -hmm. you know, getting medical users to, to sort of share their, their thoughts and experiences on the forum. For sure. Uh, but as the rec market opened up, we sort of switched, and, and that was a business decision. Yeah. That's obviously where all the consumer marketing dollars are, you know, the concentration yeah. of, uh, of the budget these there. So. For sure. Yeah, and I assume probably um, that it's similar to like something like you know, people that are into beers, like trying different craft beers and stuff like that. I, I assume you probably have that as well. Yeah, I think we're looking to like try new things. A hundred percent. It's it's not as widespread. I think yeah. it's much more sort of that core group that really knows what they're you know what they've been buying every week. Yeah. Um, and they're you know testing out um, in a very active way. I think a, a lot of can of curious people are, are coming to the stores and just 
randomly trying product, I'll take a little bit of this and yeah, a little yeah. bit of that and test it out for themselves. And just see how, what, what they like about it. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, where do you see the industry headed in the future? Yeah, well, I think we all, you know, I won't be uh, setting the world on fire if I say 2020 is going to be a tough year for cannabis. Okay. Um, I do think it's probably going to shape out, uh, as far as the industry is concerned, the way that the beer market has yeah. in Canada, where you get a couple of big players and everything sort of consolidates around them, and then you've got a lot of craft. Okay. Uh, who will either you know eke out some some market share and some premium positioning, sure. get picked up by one of the big ones, um, and that's that's probably how it's going to shape up. Yeah. And I think you know this year is probably going to be a bit of a red hot for a lot of companies. Not a lot of cash. It's hard to get financing. Okay. There's a lot of oversupply, uh, over capacity. Yeah. So they're running you know, they're running pretty fast. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be some consolidation and streamlining, and then 2021. Yeah. Hopefully sooner, but probably that long. Uh, yeah. We should be looking. Yeah, much better as an industry. For sure. Uh, retail is opening up in Ontario through this year. That's going to bring out a lot of top line revenue. And I think finally the, the forecast will catch up to me. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, because I think, especially when like it became legal, like there was a huge doom. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just investor yeah. investor mania, right? So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I can imagine. That's amazing. Um, for your position at Lyft Info, so you're the chief revenue officer, what does that mean? That is, what do you do on a daily basis? What sort of that's the first focus? question everyone asks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, chief financial officer, nobody ever asked that question, the revenue guy. Yeah. Uh, you know what, it's, you know, at Lyft, especially small, you know, sort of startup, we're about 40 people. Okay. Um, titles, you know, kind of mean something you kind of don't on any given day on, you know, CMO, COO, yeah. CRO, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, you just kind of jump in and manage what you need to. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, you know, obviously I'm tasked with you know, driving revenue for the company. So for sure. you get involved in product development. So for Fusion, you know, I was uh, sort of brought some of the original IP to the business and was yeah. something I've done before. Um, and brought in a lot of the team that's now executing on that vision. Okay. So, you know, just it means something different every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's very interesting. Yeah. So you don't deal with both like the internal, it's sort of like the external as well. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. So our CEO uh, Matteo Larue is uh, pretty well known in the space. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the original pioneers. Um, so we've got a bit of an internal external split. Usually he'd be sitting behind the microphone, but I think he was uh, otherwise committed today. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great though. It's it's very yeah. interesting. Um, for your daily routine, what does a typical day look like for you? You know what? It's honestly every day is different. Okay. Um, you know, it's the startup world, right? So, yeah. uh, whatever project is sort of falling behind that day, whatever I, ideation session we've got to do, we've got HR issues. You know, enabling the sales team and trying to work through issues they got with us. It could be anything. For sure. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, what what is your morning routine look like? What time do you wake up? I I love what asking. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love uh, asking this question. Like, what do you do in the morning? All people, right. Yeah, I've I've heard it's a bunch of personal here. This is getting very personal. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you some questions. Yeah, that's fine. That's all good. <laughs> uh, get up at 6:45. Uh, you know, it's a little bit. Of, I don't eat breakfast, but I gotta make breakfast for kids. Okay. Uh, we gotta it. get them out the door. Whoever walks them over to the school is right around the corner from us. Yeah. So. I'm uh, I'm really well set up. I'm two doors away from the school and two doors away from the subway. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, so you so you subway to work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. I took the subway down here this morning and hopefully uh, yeah. you guys shouldn't come too close to me. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the subways are clean. Hopefully they spray Lysol all throughout. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see anyone spray that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, for your commute, are you listening to music? Just sitting there reading? What sort of yeah, podcasts actually. Great. great. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite? Uh, I do. It's they're not business centric. It's a little bit more sort of global politics kind okay. of stuff. So I'll listen to some NPR. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff. You learn lots from those podcasts. Yeah. 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 Those are great. It's very interesting. Yeah. I love finding out what sort of people do in their daily routine. I've yeah, heard so a lot of different things. Yeah. This morning I had to switch over to fantasy <laughs> baseball podcast and draft this weekend. Oh so, yeah. You know, uh, big baseball. As long guy. as we're being honest with each other. Yeah. No. No. That's fantastic. What's your favorite game? Oh, come on. Yeah. 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 Only one answer to that question. Yeah, yeah, I, I was I was seven when they first won the AL East, so that oh, was yeah? Like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big yeah, that's a yeah. big moment. Yeah. Hopefully we get one soon. Yeah, get no, one I don't think so. I, I don't think <laughs> so. <laughs> um, that's fantastic. So in your life, are you learning anything new right now? Yeah, well I mean you're you've got such scope in these jobs, you're always kinda of learning something. For sure, new. yeah. Um, we're going through uh, you know, like the rest of the cannabis industry, we're really evaluating what, what the future looks like for us. We're okay. doing a lot of things, and we know that, you know, from a business perspective, from an investor perspective, I mean, focus in general is important. Yeah. And we already kind of see, 
you know, where we can focus and really win yeah, uh, yeah. For, for all those stakeholders. For sure. Uh, so right now it's really about, you know, managing change through a pretty extensive pivot in a business. You know, you take a business that was really sort of built up around trade shows okay. and turn it into a class leading consumer insights data analytics business. Yeah. That's a massive shift, right? It's yeah, a completely yeah. different organization. So we're trying to work through that now. Um, and every day it's, you know, whether it's, you know, where are we on that on that roadmap, right yeah. down to like, how is this affecting the people on the team in ways that I, I may not see? Of course. That's, you know, it's it's a, it's a crash course in change management yeah. every day. Which is very interesting, because it's a crazy transition. Like yeah. From like the offline, to strictly like sort of online yeah. and sense of data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally what, different skill sets. What sort of data are you guys managing? Yeah, so, uh, it all sort of centers around the fact that on Lyft.co, in addition to reviews, you know, for the better part of a couple of years, we've been asking users when they register to upload receipts. So back then it was medical receipts, so it's like I went to the pharmacy, okay. and I actually bought it straight from the LPs. Here's what I bought, I uploaded, I get some points, you know, okay. towards a gift card or whatever. Great. So that's really evolved and expanded quite deeply. So now we've got receipt collection across the country, consumers coming in, you know, to win a contest or tickets or whatever. Um, uploading their purchase receipt, and that's really the basis of a consumer segmentation play. That's great. Because now I can say, like, I know who you are and what you bought. Yeah. We build out, you know, really robust profiles on the backs of that. Yeah. And then, you know, we're harvesting all of this information, right? Who these people are, you know, what are behavioral segmentation indicators, or, you know, what are they interested in, brands that they buy, uh, and from a cannabis perspective, what purchases were they making, what was in their basket. So it's really kind of end-to-end consumer data. Yeah. Uh, the industry, certainly in Canada, I think largely in the U.S., this is brand new. Yeah, Nobody's yeah. got this. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you're really getting a feel for your target. Yeah. So you're really breaking them down. That's, that's amazing. Hey, it's a CPG industry, right? Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's got a growth story. You know, yeah. we grow in the mountains of whatever. Yeah. And the reality is, like, it's going to be a little bit like wine, right? Everybody's got a personal preference. There's a general understanding that some product is, you know, higher quality than yeah, others, yeah. but the reality is, I might like a ten dollar bottle and you might like a fifty dollar bottle, but for sure, we'll like it's what a we personal like. preference. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah, it's yeah. brand that's going to yeah. win the day. Right? For sure, if you can't build yeah. a brand, um, you're probably not going to be able to, you know, to steal share or charge premium margins or anything. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to compete for sure. So we're enabling them to do that. That's that's amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, what does twenty twenty and beyond have? In store for you guys. What are your big goals for the next year? You said yeah. the next year might be rough, but sort of what are the goals? Well, yeah, I mean it's it's rough for everybody. So yeah. frankly, I think the entire industry just right for now the is industry, just yeah. batten down the hatches, yeah. get through 2020, conserve capital, you know, yeah. right size the organizations, yeah. but don't lose sight of the fact that sure. brands are on the shelves, retail's rolling out. We have to continue to invest yeah. and build those brands just much more cost effectively than we've been doing okay. so far. Cool. And for us, I think it's a little bit the same, right? Just uh, you know, continue to build out against the roadmap for data and think about, you know, the other assets we've got, how they all sort of tie in together. Yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah. And that's obviously important to grow your business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just meet new cons- consumers. Um, for um, just people looking to maybe try cannabis, whether they're medicinal or recreational yeah. users, what do you recommend for those people? What's the phrase? Uh, start low, go slow. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm sure, uh, if you've never tried it before, the worst, you know, personal experience, yeah. my first experience was not a good one. I probably okay. overdid it, didn't know what I was doing. I was okay. Whatever, okay. And shied away from it for a long time as a result. Um, the reality is, uh, you know, take a little bit, don't go beyond five milligrams of THC, get a nice little balance. And, uh, and and get comfortable with that and then go from there. Okay, so. yeah, yeah, because I know a lot of people listening, some you know might be users, some people may not have ever like, yeah. tried it before, so yeah, I don't know, I think it's very important to talk about because, yeah. you know, it's with a lot of new things, just in general, there's a lot of stigmas behind stuff, yeah. not a lot of information, whether it's educational, and you guys are really setting the stage for yeah. you know the industry, yeah. right? So I, I think back to my first alcohol experience, it wasn't a whole lot better than that one, so yeah. you know, it's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so when people are looking to learn more about a specific, I guess, product, of uh, even if it's not like a cannabis product, I know you guys have a lot of accessories and stuff yep. on your website. Yep. How, what should they be looking for other than say reviews? Like, is there any sort of key factors that sort of I don't know that sort of uh, 
add into the, uh, the actual product that they should be looking for. So if it's a cannabis product, what's the difference between like say so, the THC versus so I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, yeah, just briefly. It goes briefly, off in a yeah. bunch of different directions. Yeah. Uh, so those in the industry are starting to talk about other characteristics of the plant, yeah. the flower. Um, that people should be aware of, but the vast majority of the population is not. So there's something in the industry that we well, there's a chemical called the terpenes, okay. uh, which is effectively, I'm going to butcher this if anybody is listening to this who actually knows the answer. Um, it is the the notes of taste and smell in the bud. Okay. So they're not, you know, um, psychoactive chemicals or anything. They're not cannabinoids, yeah, yeah. but okay. they are, you know, when I smoke this, I taste pine, and lemon and stuff like that. So that sort of goes into the change of the different brands, like a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's very hard in the industry to keep consistency. Okay. So it's kind of like wine, you know, like yeah. this year's vintage will be different than next year's of based course, on yeah. the growing season and how much rain we got and all that stuff. So it's kind of similar that way. Keeping it consistent is difficult. But uh, generally speaking, you know, if I buy this, it's gonna it's gonna smoke. It's gonna taste a little bit different than this one, and it's a personal preference issue. So there are some product sort of characteristics that are I think the industry is really trying to promote because it gives them a basis for differentiation. Yeah. I don't know if the average consumer has any idea yeah. what it is before they've tried it. Of course. Um, outside of that I think yeah it's really about what is it that I'm looking to accomplish? Am I just looking to have fun on a Friday night? Am yeah. I looking to sleep better? Mm -hmm. um, and then figuring out which product, which type of sort of formulation works better for them. Yeah, yeah, which makes a lot of sense because even going back to the consistency thing, you know, you get that with any product. Yeah. You know, like even coffee, when you go to a coffee shop, you get the exact same thing, the yeah. consistency thing. Like if you go to you know, a Starbucks, the coffee may not always be the same, yeah. depending on who's making it, where in that a sort of coffee pot the coffee is. Totally. Yeah, like the yeah. strength does change. Um, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, in terms of your journey, so starting and sort of entering the cannabis industry, yeah. how did that start? Yeah, personally, um, so I'm uh, originally strategy consulting and then I was working with big publishers, so I was a porn star for a bunch of years. Okay. Uh, Autotrader.ca. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And then went small cap, so uh, I was working for a private equity firm in Toronto okay. uh, that had a little sort of you know digital media business. They were looking for an exit, turn it around, okay. and get the revenue up. So uh, so I took the plunge into that, and it was a really similar story to the to, to the Lyft story. Yeah, um, you know, smallish digital publisher, niche audience, pretty valuable niche audience mm -hmm. too. Those advertisers want to reach it, yeah. um, but couldn't really scale. Right, we only had digital media. We didn't have trade shows. So. Yeah. How do you turn this little publisher into something worth you know, maybe four million yeah. dollars? So we converted it into a data business. And we weren't working with Nielsen, but it was sort of a similar construct. Yeah. And started to sell those contracts out, right, uh, to uh, to banks and insurance companies for for that data. Yeah. So we did get an exit, and then uh, I was on the beach, did some startup work um, cool. for uh, for a couple of different companies, mortgage business called Brico.ca. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Uh, but then uh, had gotten to know Mate uh, pretty well over the last couple of years. And he was telling me about the opportunity. I was like, hey, you know, that sounds strikingly similar to what I've just been through. So I yeah. might have a playbook that we could run. And uh, so was it already started? Was Lift and Co already? Oh yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. We the business had already been running for really in its current form for the last two or three years. Okay, before that, before that. and then you sort of jumped on board, and then yeah. now you're here. Yeah, the premise was, you know, we need to build something scalable and you know, valuable for investors. And trade shows, it's very difficult to do that. Yeah, yeah. I just I love it because it's such an interesting industry. Yeah. Because it's so, and like the innovation that's coming from the industry right now, because you know there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of new trends that people are trying to meet, it's, a lot of it's new tools. It's great when you think about it. You know, Google and Facebook dominate digital media advertising course, yeah. everywhere in the world, except for the cannabis industry yeah. where they won't touch it, right? Which actually does foster a lot of innovation because all of a sudden you've got a lot of startup businesses rather than trying to work their way around the yes. business. They can just go straight up the middle and say, no, no I'm going to take this now. This is my right. yeah. opportunity. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of what we're doing. Which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very cool, though. Where else are you going to find that, right? Yeah, it's very cool because I love like what you guys are doing with technology because you're taking something that seems, you know, like just a cannabis product. It's a physical product and you're spinning tech on it. Yeah. And yeah. Just changing the industry. It's amazing. Yeah, we don't, we don't touch the plant. We don't grow. We don't sell. It's just very cool. Yeah. It's just... 
It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's a fun. I, I got to be honest. This is the most fun I've had in my career. Yeah, I can imagine. Like yeah, it's I just a wild ride. as an like an outside person, like looking in to sort of the cannabis, and it just looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, like a lot of innovation, a lot of you know, startup vibes as well. The parties are great. I, I can imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, we'll do a couple more questions, and one of the last questions I want to ask you is. If somebody's thinking about like, sort of getting into the cannabis industry, like whether they just graduated from school or just looking to get into sort of the industry, yeah. what do you recommend for them? Uh, right now, my answer is probably different than it would have been a year ago. I think this year's going to be tough, so I think you know there are jobs out there certainly, but I think that's come down quite a bit. There's probably a lot of folks who are you know in the market who have been working with cannabis. Yeah. So I think 2020 will be tough. Yeah. Um, but I think the long-term prognosis for the industry really has to change. Yeah. Just, you always find, you know, investors, I never hear a bad investment thesis. I just never hear the right timing. Yeah, yeah. Timing is kind of everything, right? Yeah. So the premise that this will turn into a multi-billion dollar massive, you know, national industry, sure. that premise hasn't changed. It's just a question of how fast that's going to happen. Of course, yeah, yeah. Business cycles are all part of it. In any yeah. Industry, society, yeah, so, um, so patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. patience and... Try it out. I 2021 guess. should be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I love it. So the last thing that we're going to do today is just a question of the day. Um, and then we'll wrap up. So what I want you to do is just ask a question to the audience. It could be anything. It could be something that they can ponder when they're walking, you know, to the subway today. Okay. Whatever they're doing, it could be anything. It All could right. be like, what is your favorite, I don't know, cannabis tool? And hopefully their answer is always different. So. All right. Um, it can be anything that you want. I, I hate to say it, it's really sad given the day. The okay. first question that came to my mind was like, are you washing your hands for 20 seconds? That's a great question. <laughs> and that is a question everybody needs to ask themselves today. I must admit, I don't think I am. Yeah, I'm going to have to get on that. No, I think we all do. It's all good. Um, all right. I think that's it for today. All right. Thanks we, for we'll having me. cut this short, but thank you so much for coming on. I really sure. appreciate it. It was great to talk and sort of uh, learn a little bit more about cannabis and lift and go. Sounds good. And your journey as well. Thanks Fantastic. very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. Until next time, peace out. Living the Canadian dream.